man, with all these officers out there concerned for their safety and taking all these precautions where they will be safe and they have unlimited resources and all this training, Kevlar vests and a utility belt with a gun and a taser and mace and all this kind of stuff and a patrol cruiser and everything's being recorded. You would think that would be the safe. Oh, wait a second. You would think it would be the safest. It is. Law enforcement is one of the safest professions. If you look at it in America, it's not even in the top 10. Last I checked, it wasn't even in the top 15 of dangerous professions. Can you imagine being a logger going, I'm, 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 I'm fearing for my safety or being on the most dangerous catch and all the guys on the boat, you know, chewing their fingernails going, I hope I don't get dragged overboard today. <laughs> You don't see, you don't ever see anybody going, well, it's, well, it was an issue of fisherman safety. It was an issue of logger safety. It was a, it was an issue of lineman safety. Ain't nobody out there talking about their safety, but cops, you don't see firefighters going, well, I didn't go into the building. Cause you know, frankly, it was an issue of firefighter safety. No, no, nobody's doing that in any other profession that I've ever seen. Does that mean there's not fear when that logger is, you know, trying to unstick a log jam or a, a lineman is 30 feet, 40 feet, 50 feet up on a cracked and splintering pole that could crack at any moment? No, I'm not saying there's not fear, but you never hear them. You never hear them articulate. I, I, I was fearing for my life, man. I, I, I had to chop that pole down. I, I couldn't go out on the deck of that boat and reel in those lobsters, that, those, that cage of lobsters, because I was so scared. They're killing people who pull out a knife when there's a car door and a rolled up window in between them. Well, I thought he had a gun. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Philip Brailsford did not think for a moment that Daniel Shaver had a gun. I don't think that cop, what was his name? Euronimo Jimenez, who offed Philando Castile. I don't think for a moment that he thought that Philando Castile had a gun after he gave Philando Castile the command. Yeah, let me see your CCW. I mean, we can live, we can choose to live, man, I'm getting hot. We can, we can choose to live in the, the land of truth, or we can choose to live in the land of fables. Which one do you want to live in? Truth will always be treason in the empire of lies. Truth is the new hate speech. Truth is always the first casualty in every war, including the information war. This is how bad things are getting here. So we got to be honest with, yeah, there might be legal cases. There might be law. There might be Supreme Court precedent, but it, does it square with justice? Does it square with truth? Does it square with Black's Law 4th Edition Dictionary of what a crime actually is? Can you really have crime if there is no victim? And can the state be a victim? If the state can be a victim, how can a non-person corporate entity be victimized by a flesh and blood man or woman? These are just, I am not, I don't have a high AQ. I am not extremely articulate. All I know is I believe I know what truth and I know what justice is. By the way, I'm not a constitutionalist. I'm just, let's, I'm, I'm a do what is rightist. I'm a, it's, it's always wrong to initiate unjust force and violence on peaceful people who haven't done anything wrong. I am pro no, no man has a higher claim over your life and property than you. It's wrong to steal. It's wrong to kill. It's wrong to harm. It's wrong to threaten. It's wrong to damage property and not pay for it. And when you've done those things, you've created a victim, i.e. you've uh, committed a crime. So when the Constitution says, for example, what, what would I be against in the Constitution? Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes. If taxes is actually armed robbery, which would be extortion, then I would be against uh, Congress shall have the power to commit armed robbery, if that's what it is. So that's why I would not call myself a constitutionalist because there's a great many things that if you look at in the constitution, it's like, like consent of the governed. I know that's outside of the constitution, but the constitution was built on the declaration of independence and this consent of the governed. Well, if governed means controlled, if governo and mentis to means, it means to control the mind or mind control. And let's, let's get mind out of it. Government means to control somebody against their will without their consent because the people in government think it would be good for them and for society. Well, what if it's not good for society? Like prohibition showed itself to be not good for society or executive order 6102. You're going to, you're going to throw somebody in jail if you catch them owning gold FDR. Really? 
and a plethora of other, the war on drugs, the Patriot Act, all this unconstitutional nasty stuff that completely goes against individual and collective rights, frankly. It's no good measure of good mental health to be considered well-adjusted to a profoundly sick society. We overall, generally speaking, have a profoundly sick society who believes a mountain, I mean an Everest size mountain of lies every single day. And they were taught to us from the time we were little bitty kids all the way through the public fool indoctrination program, the 15,000 hour government indoctrination program called the public fool system. And we believe so many freaking lies. Like, you know, the first lie is that this is actually money. This is money. No, it's used as money. It's used as a unit of exchange and it can be considered money. But more importantly uh, to, to understand is its currency. And more specifically, it is a federal reserve note. Guaranteed for all debts, public and private. This can be used as money, but it is not in and of itself money. You know what the, you know what the Constitution says money is? Only gold and silver. But they had to get rid of the gold standard back in 1971. A tricky dick, eh? We're going to suspend temporarily the convertibility of uh, gold and other precious metals. We're going we're gonna to temporarily suspend the convertibility. That's a 50, that's a five decade temporary, but then nothing is so permanent as a temporary government program, huh? I digress or do I, or do I digress? Or is all this stuff like interlaced? It's, it's like this, it's this one big deceptive movable anthill. It just keeps on moving. You can knock it down one day and then it appears somewhere else and then it appears somewhere else and you got to deal with it. So, you know, when you cross examine like that and you bring out all this obvious stuff of road piracy and corporate traffic law, and you know, you do have the fundamental right to travel. It is a fundamental right, not requiring licensing, registration, and forced insurances. Like one of those court cases says, Hey, you can't use that right here. Cause we got us some traffic law right here. And this traffic law applies to you. Well, guess what? Traffic law, practically speaking, Trump's constitutional law. It's as clear and evident as the nose on your face. You don't have to be a lawyer. You don't have to have a bar card. You don't have to be a judge. You don't have to be, have a high IQ. All you got to do is face the facts and see what reality is. Oh, and follow the money. Follow the money. Hey, they're making, they're making money. These law enforcers who are supposed to be serving and protecting us, we're supposed to be benefiting uh, by us giving them their trust, but they're actually using being used as revenue generating tools to the tune of $6.2 billion every single year just for speeding tickets. Let that sink in. $6.2 billion a year. That's $11,734 every single minute of every single day in all 50 states. That is a revenue generating waterfall. It just keeps, or a, it's like a geyser at Yellowstone. Just keep, I don't know how it happens. It just keeps coming out of the ground. $6.2 billion. And that's just traffic tickets. That's just speeding tickets. We're not even taught. We don't even add yet the $14.1 billion annually that comes from civil asset forfeiture, which every single sheriff under Jim Skinner, the national sheriff's association signed onto and are against HR 1525 for civil asset forfeiture is literally legalized theft under the auspices of we got to take care of the Mexican drug car. You, you want the Mexican drug cartels to run rampant? And rough shot over all Americans? Well, if you don't, then you want to back us in civil asset forfeiture. It's just that the only problem with that is when you see victims of civil asset forfeiture, it's not the Mexican drug cartels. It's somebody like Stephen Lara, a veteran, Stephen Lara, driving from Texas to California to visit his daughters with his life savings of $87,000 in the trunk in the Nevada state. Oh, it's Nevada, of course. But it's not just Nevada, it's Tennessee, it's Oklahoma, it's Arkansas, it's California. But the Nevada state trooper seized his $87,000, not because Stephen Lara had done anything wrong, but, and not because he was pinned or charged with a crime, because he wasn't. 
It's because they suspected that that money might be used in in funding criminal activity. So they ran the dog. And of course, the dog is going to hit on the money. Why? Because 90 to 95% of all American currency has some amount of cocaine on it, according to many, many studies. So of course, they're going to hit on it. And they're going to use that as justification to take a poor man's life savings from him. Stephen Lair is not a part of the Mexican drug cartel. He's just a guy who wants to provide for his family and has his life savings in the car because he doesn't trust the banking system. That's not crazy. That's sanity. But the road pirates of the Nevada State Patrol are going to relieve him of that, two of which said that they were military vets as well. Hoorah. Thanks. Thanks, brothers. Look it up. Look up Stephen Lara, Nevada State Troopers uh, Civil Asset Forfeiture. By the way, he won the case because the ACLU got involved and there was because there was a national outcry against the Nevada State Troopers. They got tens of thousands of negative comments saying, you give that man's money back, you freaking crooks. And because they're You know, the public relations guy said, hey, this ain't looking too good for us. They gave it back, not because it was the right thing to do to give it back. It was the wrong thing to take in the first place, but the right thing would have been to give it back. They only gave it back because they got caught. They didn't give it back because they came to the realization, hey, what we're doing is wrong. Maybe we should stop this. So much criminality. Just bringing this back around, so much criminality, so many lies that if you did ask the question about universal, tra- you know, this, this corporate traffic law and the uh, extortion of the American tax cattle under traffic law and the fact that we lose all of our constitutional rights at a traffic stop, if you're not free to travel, uh, you're not free to do anything. And if you try to pull away from that police officer, they will put the helicopters in the air. They will put the dogs on the ground. They will call for unlimited resources and they will hunt you down. Because you left their traffic stop. So you ain't free to go. If you're not free to go, you're not, you don't have individual rights. Stop seeing land of the free home of the brave.